Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about activated carbon and its application in room acoustics. Wow, that's a mouthful. Well, we can speak uh, pretty fluently and uh, persuasively with this subject. We've been working with activated carbon or charcoal for almost 20 years now. So we're pretty familiar with it. We actually manufacture our own. So there's a lot of variables that you have to uh, manage and control with it and we'll discuss some of those. So activated carbon is really charcoal, same material type that's in your grills and that you use to cook food on and things like that. You know, it's carbon 12, I believe, is the basis, which is pretty much the composition of the human uh, organism. You know, it's a carbon, we're a carbon-based life form. So that's one of the uh, founding uh, pillars, if you will, of our constitution as being. So what does it look like? Well, if you hold it up to the light, it looks like little meteors. Small granules full of holes, very dense. You can break it, push it, squeeze it, but it's, it's, it's pretty dense. And it has a lot of holes, and those holes are, are the magic part of it, which we use for sound absorption. We'll talk a little bit about that. Each granule has a density, poricity, and a diameter in the holes. So when you're dealing with sound absorption, you have to control the density of the granule, the number and size of each hole, along with keeping the moisture out of it. This is where a lot of people don't understand about carbon. It's used for water and air filtration, the over-the-counter stuff is. Let me give you an example that really how I discovered this. I was in our office one day, and I don't know, this was back in the 80s, and there was this filter on top of the faucet in the kitchen, and it had a red LED light. And I thought, wow, red light, electricity and water, what's going on here? I'd never seen these filters before. They just came onto the marketplace. So I unscrewed it from the faucet, Try to figure out a way to open it. It has to have a you know energy source inside. It's got an LED light. So I wanted to see what was going on. So I couldn't open it. So I hit it with a hammer and broke it. And all these little granules bounced around on the kitchen countertop. So I held one of them up to the light. It just looks like a little meteor. You could see, you know, light through it and part of it if you angled it and looked like a little meteor. So I thought, well, wait a minute. They're using it for absorption of water, the, probably the, you know, solid materials that are in water. Water, there's sound in water. So maybe it could be an element for one of my products. That's what I was thinking. Because I've been working on the diaphragmatic design for years in the real estate business, in the walls, but I could never find a good fill material. Because the depth of the cabinet or the depth of the wall or the depth of a product determines what frequency it starts working at. But the material that you put inside the cabinet determines how much energy is absorbed at each one of those frequencies. So I got to thinking, you know, maybe this is a viable cabinet fill material for my diaphragmatic absorption technology. And it turned out to be a wonderful fill material after we tried 12, 13 different types. We even tried diatomaceous earth. You can look that one up on the internet. My secretary came in and she says, well, we also have those for the air. So wait a minute. Now, air and water filtration, sound is in both. I was really encouraged. So we started the process. One thing that you have to realize is that the over-the-counter carbons that you use for water and air filtration will not work for sound. For one simple reason, they lack the density, the pericity count, but more importantly, they absorb moisture. That's what carbon does. As the carbon absorbs moisture, the, the absorption that it's contributing to the process diminishes dramatically. So when we manufacture our carbons, we treat them so that they do not absorb moisture because as they absorb moisture, which is what they do, they lose performance. So that's why over-the-counter carbons won't work. They don't have the right density, they don't have the right pericity, and they absorb too much moisture. Okay. Diaphragmatic absorption. This is what we use in the inside of our cabinets. And you can see here, here's a good graphic 
showing the diaphragmatic filters in there. We call it a filter. It's an assembly to support the carbon. You think about it when you were kids, you had bunk beds and you had that little ladder that went from the low bunk to the high bunk. Well, that's kind of what a filter looks like. It's, you can see in this graphic here, it's a, it's a support structure with steps and then the carbon fits between the steps. We have the perforated uh, pegboard on the outside, which allows for air flow through it. If you look at this design, it's a perforated absorber. So all of our carbon technology is a perforated absorber with carbon inside a diaphragmatic absorber. Never been done before. That's why we get the tremendous rates and levels of absorption that we do. So the depth of the cabinet determines how low it will be and the rate, that's where the activated carbon comes in because it controls how much energy we absorb from that lower frequency that the cabinet's designed to begin at. So that's the key. We can vary the thickness of the carbon filter to increase the rate. And we do that all the time in our CAW system. And you can see in our CAW system, hopefully we can put a link there to it, where we actually tune the room every 14 and a half inches. Why 14 and a half inches? Because 14 and a half inches is the distance between studs on a 16 inch on center wood frame wall. So we frame out our rooms with two by 12s and then the carbon filters go between the studs. What is this? Well, it's a di diaphragmatic absorber. The studs are the sides of the walls. So we have a back and a front. So it's a diaphragmatic absorber. So we can tune the room every 14 and a half inches. And that's a really good benefit when you're dealing with low frequency pressure is we turn the whole wall into a diaphragmatic absorber. And you need a lot of square footage of coverage when you're dealing with low frequency pressure waves. Remember, they're like ocean waves. They're slapping against the walls constantly. So when we have the ability to go after the frequency and amplitude every 14 and a half inches, we really can tune it. So 30, 40, 50, 60 hertz, you know, you're, you're needing 10, 11, 12 inches of cabinet depth to get down into those frequencies. And then you add the carbon and that controls the rate. So when you are able to tune a room every 14 and a half inches, you can really get a smooth response curve in the room. You're not putting a box here or a box there. You know, you're know, you actually taking the room and using it as a tool to manage the low frequency pressure in the room. And you can do it on the floor, you can do it on the ceiling, and you do it on the four walls. We've done it in many, many surfaces throughout the years with our projects. So, so you can use it for middle and high frequency absorption, no problem. However, you have to weigh out the cost benefit ratio. It's not cheap. It's not cheap to manufacture, as you can imagine, when you have all these variables to control. So maybe foam technology would be more cost effective. It's definitely lighter in weight. Carbon is very heavy. I think we put 65 pounds of it <clears throat> inside our diaphragmatic absorbers. So a middle and high frequency absorber might weigh 20, 30 pounds. It might produce the same frequency response as a two inch piece of foam, which is much lighter and much more economical to work with. So you have to look at the cost benefit, but it can be used for middle and high frequency. But it, in our processes, we use it for low frequency and we use it to control the rate of absorption. Look at the curve of our ACDA 12. That's our biggest sponge. We call them sponges. 30, 40, 50 hertz, 30, 35, 40, 63, and 50 cycles, 100%. Now that's every square foot surface area of the product. So these are huge sponges, 200 pounds each, but that's what you have to have. You have to have the mass and the density to deal with those huge waves, ocean waves of energy that oscillate through our rooms. Like I said, it can be used for middle and high frequency absorption, but you have to weigh the cost benefit ratios. Activated carbon and its application in room acoustics. It's a sound absorption technology type, and it has to be used correctly inside of a unit. We use a carbon perforated absorber, and you can look up the definition of that, inside a diaphragmatic, like I said, never been done before. That's why we get rates and levels of absorption never achieved by anyone 
that I'm aware of uh, in the last 20, 25 years. Activated carbon and its application in room acoustics. I hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.